Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a playthrough for Tiny Epic Quest. This one is for one or four players from Gameland Games, an adventure puzzle game. You're going to be playing adventurers. As a matter of fact, you got a team of three adventurers right there. You're going to be going around the land, uh, getting spells, gathering power, defeating goblins. But it all plays out as this kind of geometric puzzle. I truly think that in terms of a pure distilled solo experience, Tiny Epic Quest is the best Tiny Epic game for my money, and I'm happy to bring a full solo playthrough for you today. But before I get into all that, let me tell you about the One Stop Co-op Shop. We are a gaming empire. You are on the YouTube channel. Uh, please give this video a like and our channel up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Our YouTube streaming channel is our sister channel. We do lots of overlap, but unique games as well, depending on who is doing the playthroughs and who is behind the camera for you. We have our podcast twice per week. We do special topics midweek and uh, on the weekends we have dedicated gaming coverage for all your cooperative and solo favorites. We have our Discord. Our Discord is completely free to join. Go ahead and check the show notes. Uh, you can join our Discord, participate in the conversation, uh, get requests. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had a request for all the Tiny Epic Games in one playlist, so this is part of that playlist. Tiny Epic Games all day long. This is the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. So let me get into a rules explanation before I dive into the playthrough. So this is the personal player area. Uh, one player, so I only need one of these uh, mats over here. Uh, it governs all three adventurers and it represents my collective power. So there are three areas generally to note. Uh, my health, both my current health and my maximum health. My magic, same thing, current and maximum. And also the status of the weapons that I get to earn. So the essence of Tiny Epic Quest is to move these things along, grow in power. The more powerful I am, the more points I score. So the game has two phases. Uh, the first phase is kind of movement and positioning, and the second phase is resolution. I'll get into all that in just a second, but I wanted to let you know why I would move somewhere and what kind of power I gain. Okay, so uh, in order to gain maximum health, I would... Uh, move to areas with goblins, and I will defeat goblins in that second resolution phase. In order to gain magical power, I would move to these types of areas where there is some kind of spell. And once again, I would do some kind of challenge the second phase, and I would gain uh, maximum power that way. And if I wanted to gain one of these weapons, I would visit the corresponding uh, area, which you see this temple. I would go down this track. There's a few of them around the board. And if I was able to successfully go down the track during the resolution phase, then I could progress these weapons and eventually earn them and get their power. That is the essence of what I'm trying to do in Tiny Epic Quest. So I'm going to be moving through five individual rounds of Tiny Epic Quest and tracking my progress along these point scoring tracks. And there's three main ways to score points. So this is the magic track over here, depending on how powerful I can make myself. Uh, I'll, I'll score points that way. Uh, the goblins I showed you, the more goblins I defeat, the more points I get. I can also get uh, points from quests. So then these are the quests. There's always going to be three available, and I can complete those as I go do the movements and the resolutions and everything. For the most part, the quests are either def uh, get a temple track, which would get me an extra weapon and the quest, or do some kind of movement effect. So in this particular case, I would position my adventurers a certain way. Once I get that, I would get the award and then have credit for the quest there. So I'll just play the first round and that will give you a, a whole sense of the rules. So uh, this is the first phase of two, which is the movement phase. This is when I position my character in order to get the things that I want. So I'm going to move four times uh, with these five movement cards. The movement cards represent types of movement. So I can move uh, one of my characters uh, horizontally or diagonally or around uh, by ship. So there's gonna be uh, options. Uh, what I do on a particular turn is I pick two of these cards and pick one. So I happen to get on this first turn uh, the foot and the raft. So I can move one of my characters one space anywhere or uh, up the river. So you see on the mat, you can see the river is there. So that is a visual cue for you. I am going to choose to move on foot. I'm going to discard that. I'll get that back next round. 
and I'm going to position this one character here at the fire temple. So the reason I did that, if you look at my player area, so this is a prerequisite for getting the shield. Uh, so I can do this prerequisite, and when I did that, I would be able to move that shield over. I'll work on that by the end of the round. Also, one of my quests is to get the fire mountain. So that's really what you want to do. You want to be able to, to accomplish multiple things at once, and puzzling that out is the fun of this game. So for the next turn, I would keep the card that I have and draw another, and I would choose among these two uh, movement cards. So in this particular case, I'm going to use the ship. Too bad, Raft. <laughs> uh, I'll get to you eventually, maybe. So I am going to use the ship. I'm going to move another character. Now, uh, I explained that there were three general areas to get what I want. There's also these mushroom grotto places, which represent kind of one shots that supplement uh, the other spaces. So I'm going to move around the board this way. And I'm going to land at this particular grotto spot. What this says is advance one of your heroes one space on a temple track. So the reason I would want to do that is because the resolution phase involves some dice rolling, which I'm going to show you. But if I can do things automatically without rolling dice, that's always good. For my next turn, I'm going to pull two cards. I have a raft and a griffin now. Uh, the griffin allows me lots of movement along a diagonal. So it's not just limited to the next card. I get to uh, keep on going. So we're going to continue to ignore the raft <laughs> uh, and get to the griffin. So this character wouldn't do anything during the resolution phase. You want to avoid that. You want to be able to have all three of your characters doing something. Uh, during that resolution. So we're going to move over here to the goblin and we are going to try to smoke this goblin right there. And so for my last movement of the turn, I only have two movement cards left. I have the raft, which is up and down, and I have the horse, which you see these roads that are printed on the uh, player mat. I would go horizontally. So the raft has been ignored the entire time and I'm going to move my last adventure into position at the uh, magic spot where I can earn the spider spell. And that's it for movement for round one. All right, so now it is time for the resolution step. So what I've done is I've taken the three cards where my characters are questing, and I've separated them out just for the purpose of visual clarity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll these custom dice, and I'm going to resolve all of them. So the biggest thing I would resolve uh, here is this magic area. So you can imagine that throughout the evening uh, that magics uh, in the air like electricity are thrumming with greater and greater intensity. And the essence of the dice roll is that I want to get as much out of it before I get damaged and hurt myself. Uh, so uh, each round this will progress depending on the number of mushrooms I roll and then things would happen to me depending on which section of the magic track the mushroom is on. This particular um, key, which is my butterfly, is going to track my personal growth in magic. I'm going to learn a, or try to learn anyway, a level three spell, which needs, I would need to get the mushroom all the way to the end, which would earn me three points and I'd be able to earn that uh, spider spell. If I do not make it, if I somehow lose too much health or for whatever reason, and I don't make it all the way to three, then I would lose the opportunity to earn that spell, which is devastating. Cannot fail. <laughs> All right, so let's get rolling. So, all right, so I think I got a little bit of a rainbow over there. So how I would resolve these symbols is I would consult this card. So then I would resolve damage first and then some uh, of these personal power-ups and then the rest of the symbols. So resolve damage first. Uh, if I were in a certain section, then I, it would damage me. However, because magic is you know not so bad over here, the, I ignore the first symbol on this track. So that's perfectly fine. The second symbol would gain me magic power, but I already am at maximum magic power, so I could ignore that one too. And then I would get a mushroom. The mushroom allows me to move one forward on the track, so I made positive progress without doing any damage to myself. So happy with that. Next thing I would resolve is this uh, goblin punch. The way killing goblins works is that they have six hit points that you would track along the uh, this hexagon. And once I get to the end, then I would be able to claim it, but I am not quite there yet. I have delivered one punch. And finally, this torch. This would be useful for completing another type of temple track. You can either have torches or scrolls, but I didn't get anything. <laughs> so this symbol is wasted. 
one specific thing to note with regards to the dice rolls is that at any point uh, during the resolution of those dice, I could spend two of my energy in order to advance one of these temple track symbols or defend against an incoming damage. I don't have a lot of energy, so I'm not going to spend uh, too much right now, but I have it in reserve just in case I need that one more to get the uh, scroll that I need. As you can tell, resolution involves a whole bunch of dice rolling, so go ahead and get used to it. All right, so uh, I should have spent that two energy. Look at that. <laughs> and so spending energy has to happen in the moment, so there's nothing that I can do. Uh, these are wasted, but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, but I did get two mushrooms, so I can progress the track that way, and a useless flame. Keep going! Wow, okay, so that's not so great. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I have two damage. Uh, I ignore one, but I would take the other, but I am going to spend the two energy on that because I get one back uh, from this. So I am now at uh, two out of three energy, and I am continuing to progress the mushroom. This is looking pretty good, so I'm going to keep on going. Ugh. <laughs> All right, so now I've reached a different section of the mushroom track, so it follow, the dice follow a different set of rules. Now, I would ignore the second uh, damage, but I would take the first, and I am going to take that damage. Uh, reason being is because uh, I only got one energy die, and according to the rule here, I would ignore the first energy die. I would get uh, energy from any subsequent dice, but I would ignore the first. So as you see, uh, it's getting more and more dangerous to just hang out. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm, although uh, I'm headed through this so fast, I might not be, defeat the goblin in time. Uh, if I don't defeat the goblin in time, just reset, so that would be kind of a waste, but I'm going to do the best that I can to try to get everything that I'm going for. So I'm going to take two damage. I'm down to three, which is not good news, uh, but at least I did two damage to the goblin. No um, progress on the track. So if I were to resign... Uh, I would remain on this track and I wouldn't be able to move that character uh, unless I fired off a special power. But for the most part, that character would be stuck and I wouldn't have access to them. So it's actually really bad to get the character stuck in the uh, temple and retire early. But <laughs> oh, well, that's the push pull of the dice rolls. Much better. OK, did not get any uh, terrible symbols. I did get one mushroom and I will progress on the track over here and I am one away from killing the goblin. Need more rolls like that, please. So that is basically perfect. That's not perfect. I would be damaged and I am now down to two health on my tracker, but I did get the finish of this uh, mushroom i am now maximum magic right there so if i were to quit right now i would get three uh expertise or whatever this resource is called and i would earn that spell i did also get the last fist that i needed and i defeated the goblin bam i got one uh scroll and i can use my last two energy so i'm at zero to get the last track and I would have earned this mountain as well. So I got everything I wanted. I learned the spell. That's great. I defeated the goblin. I made it to the end of the track, but I cost me. <laughs> the cost was dear. See that? Two health, no energy, but everything else uh, was accomplished. So a couple things happened. So I'm going to move my shield over because I have explored this temple, and I have also earned... This spell, complete the fire temple, and I get to equip an item. I'll show you that item uh, when I get back into play next turn. So I defeated a goblin, so that increases the, my maximum health by one. So because I gained three levels on that, my maximum level goes to six. I cannot exceed 10. So once I hit level seven plus the basic three, I would be at the maximum spell. And also, uh, if I get a couple more goblins, I'd be at maximum health as well. Ugh. <laughs> That's not so great. But for the very last action of the round, I am going to return all three of my characters uh, to this area. And for each character that I return, I gain three health and three power. 
So if they were, uh, I had one stuck at the temple track, that would only be two health and two power because they don't come back if they're halfway through the temple. But uh, this, it will set me up for the next round. Whew. Some last little bit of setup for next round. Uh, any goblin that was out uh, and not attacked becomes aggressive. Now, in order to move through their space, I have to spend an energy. So they're going to really trip me up there. Any new goblin that comes out replaces the ones that I kill, but they start passive. So that's not too bad. Also, I got myself a little item meeple. Look how cute. I love these things. The power of this item meeple is that the equipped hero only needs to spend one energy to advance the temple track. Looks like I'm going to be exploring a good amount. And this is a good thing. This was the quest that replaced the one that I completed, uh, the Shadow Temple. Uh, so I would get another, uh, another item for completing that. And look at that. What a coincidence. I got super lucky. Uh, that is the temple that I'm going for next. So I'll be able to do two things at once. On to round two. All right, we're ready for round two. One quick rules correction. In solo, not all of the goblins move to uh, passive, only three of them. So I picked three random ones to move to aggressive, and the rest are still passive. So that's okay. All right, uh, so I've been sitting here puzzling out. <laughs> I really, really want this quest, which is to position my characters at any point during a turn, or they end their turn, in a diagonal, and just can't do it. All right, so the first uh, options I have are either foot or ship. I'm going to use the ship to move my intrepid adventurer, dubbed adventure, <laughs> intrepid adventurer, by their lantern. And I'm going to move them over here uh, to get the shield and to complete this quest. Second set of moves is a foot or a griffin move. That is going to be a foot move. And I'm going to do a track heavy, quest heavy uh, uh, game. So, and I also want to set up because the second phase of getting the sword on my sheet is the forest track. So, in the third round, I'll be able to claim both of those things. My third turn, I have the choice between the horse and the griffin. I'm going to use the griffin to move down here. Now, the rulebook states if I land in a spot where there's a goblin, then I pacify them. It's like I punk them out. <laughs> it's only if I pass them, it's like paying a toll. So, this symbol says roll the dice and use any flame or scroll to advance any of your heroes on the temple tracks let's see what i get hey, hey that looks pretty good so i may have cheated with this one before <laughs> by starting them a little bit uh farther on the track than i should have let's correct that now and just go two uh, on the track there and also one on the track there and so the last uh set of cards is the horse or the raft i'm finally going to use that raft and go ahead and position my character there like i said before uh, if I land on a goblin, I pacify them, uh, and I'm ready to battle. All right, let's do some dice resolution. I got my two characters on tracks. Uh, so this is temple heavy. Not going to gain some spell this turn, but the, the mushroom does progress, so got to worry about that. All right, yes. So we get one energy. Uh, we progress two on the temple track without spending energy. That's very important. And then we are going to punch the goblin in the face twice. Hoo -hoo! Oh, yeah. So, unfortunately, it runs against the maximum, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> and going to move this one down one. Uh, so, I should be able to handle this as long as I get the uh, requisite punches in the face. Okay. So, we are going to go one, two, three. Uh, this one only needs to spend one energy because they have the lamp to progress down to the bottom. And we are going to do the goblin punch. Uh, I'm looking, this is looking pretty good so far, as long as I get the, uh, this thing that I need. Okay, so we are going to, wow, oh my gosh. So that is actually done. That's really nice. Uh, I go to maximum energy, and then I will spend it, because I'm about to get it back from returning my characters, and progress to the bottom of the track. I was able to do all that without spending a ton of resources. Sometimes that happens. That won't happen all the time. All right, so a couple of things are going to happen. I get one maximum health for another goblin defeated. They return to the land, so they are going to max out. Uh, every character that returns to the capital city gets some stuff back, so I'm actually at maximum for all of my values. Come on now. There we go. Uh, so I completed this quest, which is for the uh, diamond shard or gemstone. Anytime you may convert heart into energy. I'll take that, and I have a character that is equipped right there. Also, I have completed this quest. 
So uh, I don't think I mentioned this in the overview, but you do get points for each of these uh, items that you com that you earn. So that's nice. And this item will be equipped on a separate character. I don't have to equip them in separate characters. They're all uh, they they all kind of the same, especially if they have this global effect like this. Spend one energy to defend one um, uh, damage instead of two. I like that. And also, I'm probably doing a very martial type game. Uh, so I'm going to progress the sword as well because I completed the desert track. So let's see what spell I get to replace the one in the row. Uh, study with foreign wizards. Have your heroes on three map cards. That creates this formation, a little flying V. Uh, and I could advance my butterfly one spell token in the spell library. So uh, just to be clear, I could complete these on the same round, although I could not complete them on the same turn. So I'm going to try to get both of them. Why not? And that is the end of round two. All right, I am back for round three. I spent a lot of time off camera plotting and planning and trying to get myself to the point where I can uh, complete both of these. That's not going to happen, but we are going to complete one of them. All right, so uh, we have a raft and a ship. We are going to use the ship to position the intrepid adventurer. No, that's not them. Uh, right here, they're going to go around this way. They're going to pay one energy because of this aggressive goblin. Have to pay the toll uh, and land right there at the entrance. Next move, raft or foot. We are going to go by foot. One space, this adventurer with the shield is going to attack a goblin. Next up, raft or horse. We are going to take the last adventurer and move them over here to this grotto. So that will deal one to a goblin to one that is attacking one of my heroes. Let's go ahead and do that. The last card is the griffin. And the griffin, I'm going to take this character and move them over here so that we are going to take out uh, two goblins in one turn. I'm going to satisfy this quest. The FAQ uh, specifies that it can be up or down as long as it's making that general shape, which I am which allows me to move my spell marker one. So even though I'm not going to work on it, I at least made a little bit more progress and will score more points. So we need lots of goblin punches and some torches. Let's see what happens. All right, so I ignore this one. Uh, I am going to use my shield. Remember, I have the shield, uh, and the shield allows me to defend by spending one energy. Uh, that should be on the six. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to spend one energy to defend that. So I'm okay there. Uh, going to raise that too, but I didn't get anything else done. All right, let's see what happens. Come on. That's all right. That's okay. So uh, same thing. I'm going to spend one energy right there. Uh, and I'm going to move down two. So that works out for me. Come on. I need some uh, punches in the face. Let's do it. That's a little bit better, but I am really taking it on the chin. That's terrible. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and use another energy. Uh, and at the very least, I was able to get a goblin punched. And I can use that. And because I have this thing, I'm going to use another energy to move down here. Ugh. Come on, more punches. Or at least more energy, my goodness. Uh, all right, well, I ignore that first one. Uh, I ignore these. Uh, this one I'll just kind of let hang out, but at least I get an energy back. That is much better. Fantastic. Okay, so I get another energy back, which I am going to spend uh, to get you to the bottom of the track, just to kind of get that out of the way. And we are going to move that twice. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and keep doing it. Yes, more punches and more ignoring of that. And I haven't gotten a lot of mushrooms, so I am still safe. Come on. Oh, look at that. I ended up getting up in that one, but this one still needs some damage. Uh, all right, that's much better. So we got that one. We got one, two. I'm already down here, so I don't have to worry about that. I just need to finish off this goblin with three more punches. Uh, all right, three more punches. I do take a damage. I'm okay with that. Uh, move that forward one, and actually move that forward two. No! And, but another punch. I just need two more. Boy, that is a lot of <laughs> torches. 
uh, moving the mushroom, but moving that along. And so I do, so I'm in the spot where I don't get any credit for um, energy. I just moved the mushroom over, so that didn't do me anything. I just need one more, one more. Ugh. All right, well, I will take that damage right there. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so this is getting a little bit silly. <laughs> So move that there. I do take another damage. Oh, come on. Come on. Where is my... Oh. All right. So now that now I'm in a little bit of trouble because once you get to the maximum, it deals two damage. Uh, so that would take two damage, but I can block that by spending one energy. It specifically says I block the face. I don't block the damage. So I, 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 I'm able to do that as long as I have energy. So that's fine. But that is ridiculous. But I do lose another, take another damage because a mushroom is now worth damage. That's terrible. Thank God, goodness. So I'm going to take the damage there. Uh, but I do finally take this thing out and I've accomplished all of my goals. Whew. All right, so lots of good stuff happening. So we're going to increase the maximum health to 10 because I have four. Uh, killed goblins plus the six base. I uh, did get one spell level from that quest. So then my maximum goes up one. Uh, so we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three for being in, uh, getting my adventurers back. And as you see, I have the item meeple who is loaded for bear, sword, and bow. The sword coming from completing the forest. And also, <laughs> just a lot of stuff hanging around there. Uh, the forest as well yielded a bow sword it, I get to spend extra energy to generate some punch, which is nice and this one I get to attack at range So I think I'm going to make this a goblin killing adventure uh, So that is uh, basically it. Oh one more thing. I got a new quest uh, Which is to make this formation which is three away all my adventurers are away from the um, my center uh, village and if I do that, I would get that. I think I can get that done next turn. All right, we are now ready to begin round four. So round four, I have the ship and the raft. Let's go ahead and take the ship. Uh, this one, uh, let's go with this one right over here. With this little shield uh, guy. We're going to move this way. We're going to land. We're going to kill some goblins. Are they going to, like I said, I'm going to make this a goblin killing adventure. The next cards are raft and foot. I am going to use my foot to, uh, let's go here with the adventurer right there. We're going to deal one to a goblin that one of your heroes is attacking. Wham! Take my word for it. There you go. Next cards by Raft and by a Horse. I haven't used the Raft very much, but we're going to use the Raft right now. Uh, we're going to move here. I think this is the most, uh, <laughs> the best card in the game uh, for what happens. Unfortunately, I can't access it too much, but I'm going to access it right now. Uh, first of all, we're going to pacify this goblin for being in its card. I'm not exactly sure if I need to be exactly here or if I could do it from the card. I'm just going to say I could do that. Oh, and I had to pay one energy in order to move that way, which let me go ahead and pay that. I'm down to two. All right, got all that done. Move another one of your heroes three map cards. One two three let's go ahead and attack another goblin that satisfies the condition of this quest all of my heroes are at least three away from my center area so i gain two and two need that big time next card is a oh okay all right because i happen to have this one these are the two temples that i need and this is the second one as you can see this one's the first uh, so I will get a boomerang out of that. Hmm, maybe I can go ahead and complete that All right, so this was a bit of a left turn in my strategy uh, I was gonna go just straight up goblin hunting this turn But if I'm gonna get a quest out of getting that last item then I might as well so then I'm going to use the horse and We are going to go to this area and we're going to try to get the magic out of that all right, so let's have some fun. Oh, by the way, I, I corrected that. This uh, character is going to try to run down the track. Uh, this one is going to attack this one. Uh, this one has the bow, so they're going to attack this one with a sword. And once they're done with this, try to take that one out too. <laughs> uh, I can do it as long as I have the wherewithal, and I have a, a lot of health. 
So uh, I'm going to give it my best shot. Not off to the most auspicious start because I had to take a damage. Uh, and, uh, but I do get an energy back. And I do get a valuable punch. Sweet. Let's go ahead and finish that one off. Or try to finish that one off first. Okay. Do not, I'm not affected. I do get uh, some more energy, though, which is super, super valuable. And I get to take that one out, too. That one ended up really good. Okay. A little bit of a rainbow. Once again, I can ignore that and take that uh, and I get that. I'm doing a lot over here. <laughs> Lots to keep track of. Okay, ignore, get that. Uh, I am at seven, so that's a good thing. Uh, I finish this one off and I go down to the track right there. Wow, I am doing super, super well so far. So now we are going to go with this one. We're going to attack this one first and see how that, thing, that goes. All right, so now we're starting to jack up the mushroom right there. Uh, ignore that. Uh, I'm going to do that and spend an energy to move down there and go ahead and take that one out. Okay, so I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the uh, the safe zone on that one, but not but no longer. I'm right there. Uh, I do get some energy, and I do have this, but uh, I don't think I, I'm gonna wait until I get the two flames. Uh, I think the energy is gonna be useful for uh, blocking damage right there. Yes. Oh well. First of all, let's move that over right there. Let's take that one out. Uh, and keep going. Okay, so the party's over. <laughs> but I am going to use an energy to block. Uh, this one is useless now. And let's go ahead and move the mushroom over. Oh, oh it's getting a lot more dangerous now. Beautiful. All right. So let's go ahead and move that there. I still haven't gotten my second, but I did damage this twice. What is that? I don't know what all that is all about, but now mushrooms are going to damage me, so I'm kind of running out of time here. All right, mushroom is damaging me. I'm okay with that. That doesn't do anything, and these don't do anything. Man, come on! All right, okay. So I'm going to spend one energy to block this two damage. I'm going to spend one health on this, but I make it down to the bottom, which is exactly what I wanted. I just need a couple more, and I should be okay. Come on, fist. Come on, fist. All right. So let's go ahead and block those two. Get those out of here. These are useless. I kill this thing. Okay, so I have to deal five damage to this thing. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, but I have the sword. Uh, and I'm going to do a, a little bit of a manipulation there. I'm going to use this character's power. Uh, we're going to put ourselves down a couple health. And we're going to get energy right there. And we're going to spend that five energy. Uh, I can spend one. Uh, I can spend one to uh, defeat or generate fists. And then I'm going to defeat this last goblin. Oh, baby. All right, so that was really successful. Uh, these don't move, but these move because I got uh, all three of my characters back. This one will move down, so I'm definitely going to finish that next round. I won't be able to use it for anything, but I will get the points. Finish this quest, and I now have the boomerang. The boomerang is more goblin killing fun whenever you roll one of these guys the uh, damage, then the goblin at your portal takes a damage. Ha! You can't get away from me! And look at how good this guy looks right there. Or gal. Could be a gal. Uh, either way. And I am now at, I think this is, seven defeated goblins. If I defeat ten, then I would get the maximum points. And I'm definitely going to try for that. The new quest is... Oh, I don't think I'm going to get that one done. Oh well. All right, this one is nice and tight. I'm uh, going to stay within this little area right there. So we have first uh, the foot and the ship. 
All right, you know your job, uh, warrior, are going to uh, go here and make this one passive, waiting to die. Next one is by uh, ship or by raft. Let's go ahead and set up the final uh, temple run right there. Next one is uh, by ship or by horse. Uh, let's go ahead and take the horse and move here. Deal one uh, to a goblin that one of my heroes is attacking right there. Last one by ship or by griffin. I don't think I've ever played a game where I didn't use the ship. It's so good, but I didn't need it. Uh, we're going to move over here and kill another goblin. That gets me this card. I have my uh, heroes over here. They're not in the middle or their home base. So we're going to earn that quest and get ourselves three health. I have a feeling I'm going to be spending all of it. All right, last round, last stand. Uh, let's make it happen. Well, actually before, and there's actually a very explicit in the X FAQ. Uh, even if I'm attacking with the bow and not in the space, I do turn this one over. So uh, I am happy to, and fine to clear out a lot of these things. All right, ignore that. Get me some energy. Move the mushroom and move that way. Productive. Flames, boo. <laughs> That's not going to do me too good, but I did get an energy. Okay. Uh, a damage I ignore. Uh, two flames are not going to do me too much good, but at least I have that. And I'm at full energy. Wow, that worked out for me. Okay. Ignore that. Move there. That's about time. Uh, and let's go ahead and do what I did last time, which is prioritize the range first. Okay, I'm still uh, sitting kind of pretty uh, over here. Uh, so this is full, but so I'm going to spend one to progress down here. Still no fight and the mushroom is taking its sweet time. I'll take it. That could not be better. Sweet. So we're going to go there uh, and we're going to shoot this goblin twice. Uh, and I'll hold off on this. I'm going to wait until I get a second scroll. I'm going to be rolling enough to where I give myself a chance at that second scroll. All right. So uh, two mushrooms. That's no good. Uh, that's also no good. But we are going to kill the first goblin. Yeah, sweet. Uh, let's go for that one next. All right, so I ignore this in this zone, but I do get credit for that, and that's full. Uh, this one does hurt me. I, had, I do take a damage, uh, but I have the boomerang right there, and that is going to uh, hit that one since I was affected by this, uh, this damage. Uh, it's going to reprise on that one. Oh, yeah. Come on. I'm feeling real good about this. Oh, yes. All right. So more damage for this one. I'm still waiting for my two scrolls. Uh, that is full. I'm actually doing really well over here. I'm not getting the messy uh, damage over there. So that is a damage which I'll happily take because that's reprisal. Got it. There it is. So I am now down on the tracks and I just need to kill some goblins. Okay. One, two, and this goblin is, I'm wearing him down. <laughs> I'm wearing him down. Only two more. Okay, that is take a damage, take a damage right there. Don't need you. You're in the danger zone. Okay, but I am ready to rock. Okay, so that is one. That is a damage. I'm fine with that. Useless useless punch uh, actually let's get rid of you there we go you're down and then i'm going to spend the rest of this energy with my sword to take this one out donezo final score time and i did super good <laughs> i completed all three of these uh they're four points each so that's 12. Uh, i got to this uh dinky little level on this on the uh, butterfly track so that's actually only uh two points right there but i did complete eight quests and i got 10 uh goblins 
for a total of 69 points. I did link the score sheet at the beginning. Uh, the top level is 60, so 69 is really, really good. Makes me think that I cheated somewhere. <laughs> I did note one little area where I uh, gave myself a little extra score, but I'm not going to count that one. Uh, that's not enough to account for nine points. So if anybody notices that I have messed up a rule, obviously, especially with that uh, bow, it seemed pretty powerful. Uh, so let me know. <laughs> I know people let me know anyway, uh, but I want to get this right. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I picked uh, this game up, but I've played it a ton uh, when it was out and it was fresh. So it was my pleasure to bring this back out, refresh, and get it to the table for you. So this is Jason from the One Stop Co-op Shop. We will see you at the next stop.